Actress is Darren J. Cunningham. Once a promising young English footballer, a debilitating injury led Darren to immerse himself in the London club scene. Cunningham experiments with avant-garde, cutting-edge electronic compositions and has utilised artificial intelligence to produce novel soundscapes. You're tuned in to Roots to Grooves. Welcome back to Roots to Grooves. What's up, Roots to Grooves? This is Jesse Quigley. I'm Jay Purcell. And we're back in Seattle, Washington on Signal Radio. Yeah, and uh, again, for the new listeners, this is a show where we talk, uh, pick a new artist each week and we talk about 
uh, their music, their career, their life, from their very first releases up to where they are right now, and everything in between. And we're going to talk about this big truck that's driving by, because that's all I can hear. Actually, those are motorbikes. Oh, there you go. Even better. See Just two-wheelers, yeah. not 18-wheelers. But yes, we talk about their journey, their philosophy of, of what they're about, why they're doing what they're doing, yep. and how they get it done. And this week, we have a British electronic artist called Actress. Who cool. goes by the name of Actress. And yeah. um, I have a confession for you, Jesse. Okay, what, um, do you, what do you got? What do you got, Jay? The selection this week was a complete mistake by my part. Really? Yeah. Was this not who I was supposed to research? Am I... No, 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 no. Uh, you researched correctly. Um, but I thought it was a completely different artist. Thought I'd said that I texted you. And I couldn't have been so wrong. Oh, no. Um, I thought it was someone else. Because basically, I was just like, I don't know who to suggest. I was going to go. I went back through my uh, Spotify history of like, some playlists and some artists that I've added and albums that I've added over time sort of thing. Right. And they came across Actress. And I was like, oh, yeah, that music's dope. Yeah, this one. And I just texted it to you. And then <laughs> it wasn't until I started researching it, I was like, oh, shit, this isn't who I thought it was. <laughs> oh. Did you think it was somebody else in particular? Um, like yeah, you, um, I will still send that to you. I can't remember their name at the moment sort of thing. Um, but <laughs> hence why we're here today with actress. I yeah, guess. yeah. So, uh, but you know, this was an artist that I did add to my, uh, Spotify loves and likes in the history of me listening to music on Spotify. And, um, so I, I still do like his music, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there first of all, because this is. The reason I say this is because he's a very challenging artist to uh, talk about mm -hmm. and even listen to, I think, to some people. And I'm not sure if it's like, I think sometimes when I'm picking artists, I try to pick something that I think you might like. Mm -hmm. And then when I started researching that, I was like, oh, shit, I'm not sure if this is really in Jesse's wheelhouse of things he likes to listen to which is like fine because so, we're, we're yeah. here to explore and to learn ourselves yeah so it's an exploration episode yeah we'll, that's we'll fantastic that. i've never heard of actress yeah um otherwise known as darren um is it jordan darren Cunning, cunningham oh. darren cunningham well you're yeah. going a little fast i was on his middle name okay oh he has a middle name i didn't even find that yeah there i saw jaron J. Jay, i'm sorry darren J. cunningham but i think it's um the j stands for jordan i believe okay there you go um, so you already know something I don't know. Boom. But, yeah. So yeah, Darren Cunningham from the UK, from your neck of the woods. Yeah, he's from Wolverhampton. Across the pond. He actually started his life out um, as a clarinet player. That was his first instrument, right? That was his right? first instrument. But then he put that down and put music away for a while to be a professional football player in the mm -hmm. UK, otherwise known as soccer in uh, in these part neck of the woods. Um, but obviously, soccer, aka football, in uh, UK and Europe, being our main sport and our major sport, and yeah, he managed to play professionally um, for I think it was West Bromwich Albion, which is very not, cool. I don't know. I'm not going to get into. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say it's not a very great team, but I'm not going to get into you know the the fan fandom of that. That's right now, fine. So. That's um, fine. I mean, basically saying, I don't think it was in the upper echelons of sports, so I don't think he was, he wasn't one of these players that was played, paid millions of dollars, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so. But, but uh, you know, uh, uh, a farm team perhaps, or a <laughs> up and coming, I'm not sure. Well, you know, it's funny because <laughs> in the UK, like, um, you have the Premier League, which is like the top. That's socks. the top of the top, right? That's the top of the top, and, you know, those players... Um, you know, get paid millions of dollars, mm -hmm. just like uh, U.S. football players get paid. Um, and also, like, it's funny because it, you know, in the U.K., you have all a lot of these teams like Manchester United and Liverpool mm -hmm. and all that. But ninety percent of their players are not from Liverpool and they're not from Manchester. I know everyone probably already knows this, but they're all from all over the world, and mm -hmm. most of the team is made up of people from Spain and Brazil and wherever kind of thing. Mixed matched, yeah. Yeah, and paid millions of dollars um, to play in that. But, you know, in the leagues of football, soccer in the UK, there are lower leagues. And um, at, the, at the lower levels, there are people that have to have full-time jobs but are still in the league. So they'll mm -hmm. be like painters and decorators and plumbers and then they'll go play like professional football. And um, some of these, some of these, I think there was a, 
a, a time in history where a, a whole football team that was in a lower league managed to play a Premier League team because that's the way all the competitions went. Right. So, so you got all these like painters and decorators and plumbers mm. playing mm. against like this team of like millionaires kind of thing and on the field in a real game. Uh, I always like me a, a nice that, so. underdog team. You know me, Jay. I know, yeah. That's an interesting thing. For, for a little bit, I don't know if it's in Premier League, you know Tottenham? Yeah, I know Tottenham. Okay, I yeah. used to watch them because I was living with uh, my buddy Brooks, who I went to high school with, and he was into Tottenham. And so we, would, I would, I would get into a little bit, and it was fun. Yeah, you know, they're playing far away from us in yeah um, England or wherever. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Europe somewhere. I don't know exactly where Tottenham is, but um, yeah, and they play in um, in Europe as well. And yeah, yeah. I mean, they're good games. I uh, actually used to like late night in the UK. Used to watch. Um, the, the Italian Football League. Yeah, you, sometimes you had to get up at three or four in the morning yeah. to watch these games. Yeah, uh, but the Italian football games were crazy. Like, the, the the crowds were like insane mm -hmm. going. I love the crazy energy. Cool is, yeah, I'm so, more of an American yeah. football fan than I'm a soccer yeah, yeah. or English word football football, football. fan. Yeah. Um, but I did play one one year of indoor soccer as a child. Did you like it? That Do you like fun. playing soccer? I like playing soccer. It's a good workout. Those yeah. guys are for sure athletic. Yeah. And um, skilled. A lot, lot of a lot of running. Yeah, a lot of um, stamina. Yeah. That's yeah. good circulation for these guys. <laughs> They're gonna live a long time with healthy hearts. Exactly. Yeah. And and for that, I support them. But we're not talking about football here today. Well, we're, I mean, that's where Darren Carrium, aka actress, started out. And um, who knows where he could have gone in his career? He played into his early twenties. Um, he had an injury. And that's what stopped him from being able to play football, a.k.a. soccer. Mm -hmm. And after he had his injury, he went back into the music game. And um, basically what happened there is he had a friend um, called Matthew Parsons. I don't know if this Matthew Parsons is anyone famous or of note musically. I'm not sure. Um, Maybe recognize the name, but I, I can't put a face to it. But he said uh, he had a music studio set up and his student accommodation. Um, and then Matthew went traveling and then uh, Cunningham. <laughs> are, are we really going to say someone with their last name? Darren. Uh, he purchased his, his studio equipment for 200 pounds. And, um, and then he started making his own music um, off of that initial equipment that he purchased off of his friend um and uh you know when he first started making music he said it was it was mostly just for him it was a very personal thing and it was a an escape to escape the mundane realities of day-to-day -day life that's mm -hmm. how he started making music right um this is a cool guy what what i'm getting i mean i guess first of all we heard that first track super cool so that was on a, off his very first release his first ep called no tricks cool which is i can't find it on streaming platforms so i i managed to find one track off of youtube there and that's what we kicked off the show yeah. with i hadn't yeah. heard that one yeah that one is cool that one is pretty upbeat yeah um although a lot of his stuff is not as upbeat as that one it's not as no um kind of defined or refined as that track yeah a lot of his stuff could be um articulated as abstract or avant-garde I don't know if I spell that or I'm saying that right. Yeah, no. Avant-garde. Avant-garde. Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> um, um, but uh, but basically, his music could be it could be um, conceptualized as house, techno, abstract, yeah. subtle electronic dance. Yeah. Somewhere in there, but also there's very abstract stuff and very kind of odd stuff. Even some of it is um, you know quite ambient. Yeah. Or even odd and weird, kind of mysterious, using just almost sounds. Yeah. And we can talk about it later, but, you know, again, using some, from everything from an orchestra mm -hmm. to um, a plastic bag. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, he, he strikes me as a, a quite intelligent guy. Yeah. Um, he strikes me as maybe somewhat introverted. Yeah. Um, kind of um, isolated. Yeah. I think he. I think he's he, very intense. He, yeah, he is intense. I think yeah. he, you know he's he thinks really logically. Yeah. Um. At the same time, artistically and abstract. Yeah. So it's cool to look at these interviews and see what he's saying, um, and re and reading about what he's saying and reading about what he's about, mm -hmm. um, because he's he seems intelligent and smart, but he he's very experimental. Yeah. And and he's not afraid to to try something new, and I think that's the way he kind of 
um, forged his way into the music industry coming from a soccer background. <laughs> yeah. um, and so he, this guy brings some really cool to the cool stuff to the table. He has like three or four mm -hmm. albums, LPs out besides his singles and EPs, yeah. which is where we heard that first song. Yeah. Um, some of the stuff he's um, influenced by, um, some names that I haven't heard, but Nicholas Jar, mm -hmm. Panthodo Prince, mm. if I'm saying that right, Derek May, Mm. Juan Atkins, mm. Kevin Saunderson. I haven't heard. These I haven't heard of any of these names either. Are these electronic? Did you I, look I, up who these people were? Are they I, electronic artists? I looked up a couple of them, but yeah, uh, especially like the last three: Derek May, Juan Atkins, Kevin Saunderson. Are I think a lot of his influence came from. Um, they're they're in the electronic music genre. Mm. So, well, that's cool because the the other end of it and. Uh, he was talking about this specifically about a certain project he was working on, but I think this goes for his global music inspiration outlook as well. Mm -hmm. As he said, he listens to a lot of impressionist classical music. Mm -hmm. um, impressionists. Um, I looked this up because I, I, you know, I kind of thought I knew it, but I wanted to be sure. And um, impressionist classical music is basically music, um, classical music where they focused on the mood and the atmosphere of the compositions versus mm -hmm. anything else like and put that at the forefront kind of thing yeah and i think he does a really like, good job of that and i heard that yeah. on throughout his um lps when i was listening is yeah. it's not so much it's not poppy in that sense of here here's here's a hook yeah. here's a beat and i'm gonna you know you know give you this awesome energy in this small snippet of a song or a track yeah. where it's gonna like really release a lot of energy it's more you know drawn out like you said here's i'm gonna create a mood i'm gonna create a world yeah a vibe and i was I, I remember he was speaking about it or was it was a written interview where he was speaking um where he's you know he's isolated in his studio and he's in his studio and he's using his instruments to create the music and he's pondering his music listening to it and he'll kind of like he'll he'll like be looking at one of his speakers particularly and just kind of listen to his music and he's getting the vibe of what he just created and he'll just kind of stare at his stereo speaker and just kind of admire how it was created and the shape of it and the aesthetic of it and how it makes him feel as he's kind of listening to his music so it's almost he's i think he's kind of into making tracks that um are kind of induce um a kind of meditative state yeah kind right. of a, a space he creates these vibrations of sound coming out of the speakers that allow you to kind of draw you into this really chilled out kind of space where you can kind of think and manifest and um you know use your imagination create visuals in your head right yeah yeah like shapes so, and things and yeah so he's using yeah. these you know audio vibrations in the in the air in our physical world to you know spark imagination and spark you know visual stuff in your mind's eye yeah. Um, and for that, I really respect what I was able to to listen to because that I certainly got that out of his music. Yeah. For me personally, because a lot of it isn't. Oh, I'm jamming to this. I'm driving down the road. This sounds cool. This is no, fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's no, it's poppy. Not, it's not this at all. That's the interesting. Thing. It makes you think about um, music and artists and different genres, kind of thing. Um, you know. Yeah. Because like you're saying, like this isn't the music you'd put on. Uh, for most most of the time, really, it's very in, introspective music. Mm -hmm. um, it's music that you would maybe put on if you did want to kind of escape into a sonic world, totally, um, and just really sort of trip out. Um, and yeah, it's you know, then it's not song structures. There aren't verse choruses. There's no hooks. Um, even as elect electronic music, there isn't really much to dance to a lot of the time um he has a few like housey kind of sounding tracks but for the most part it's very sort of experimental and atmospheric and it's more heady music i think like heady mm -hmm. like um is how a lot of people would i think describe that sort of sound like like, like you said at the beginning some of it is quite challenging to listen to yeah and it requires active listening yeah yeah more so than just put it on the background and just second bop to it <laughs> you know i'm just cleaning the house yeah so do right now. yeah <laughs> Right, you it, know, it, <laughs> it's quite it's quite odd yeah like i said before avant-garde yeah it's um i don't know if i'm saying that word right i'm gonna stop avant -garde, saying it. yeah um but but you know what i mean it's kind of art art so, yeah he's also sort of described his own sound as being r&b concrete 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if you've heard of music concrete before, or concrete, however they say it. But basically, it's a type of music that is created from like field recordings and raw sounds that are then made to sort of create music. So, you know, you think about a lot of kind of like industrial sounds and metal clanking things and, and they're sampled up and made to sound like something. But a lot of times the way it comes across is not musical. It's more like rhythmic or atmospheric kind of thing. Yeah, so, it's, it's definitely yeah. moody. It's vibey. Yeah. Yeah. You know, creating that aesthetic that yeah. you can you know, let your mind fall into. Yeah, um, yeah it's... And, and we can talk about it a little bit later, but he's... Like I said, he's a smart guy. He's thinking about a lot of things besides music, and yeah. you know, and and we'll talk about it. But he'll even use buildings and infrastructure in reality to to help interpret what instruments he wants to use and how he wants to use the instrument, and you know, kind of like you have a drum sound in your DAW or your computer, or whatever, and like you have a drum sound and how, how does that sound envelop the room and how does it change as it's bouncing off the walls? Yeah. And he kind of takes that into account as he's creating these vibrations that come out of the speakers. Yeah, yeah. So kind of how, you know, how, how can I use the room? How can I use the vibe of the room to come up with an idea mm-hmm. to record, to help reflect that room yeah. and that architecture and, and create an architecture within these sound waves? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm talking crazy, but it, some no, of this stuff is kind of heady, kind is. of, you know, it's, it's deep. It's, you know, deep as in the sense of you got to actively listen to it and kind of interpret it yourself. Yeah. It's not just giving it to you. No, it's like not a, easy. It's not bubblegum pop in any way. I don't know if anyone really that ca- casually listens to music will be able to listen to actress. Mm-hmm. Like you have to be a music lover or you have to be, inquisitive yeah you know because i think maybe like a lot of people that listen to music expect the hook something to sing along to or a beat or something to dance Mm -hmm. to um this is not music that does that for me for me yeah um like yeah i very rarely listen to music like actress to be honest with you um because there's a special time for it for me like um of when to listen to it Mostly, I think it's in downtime. It's in respect, in retrospective moments. Maybe sometimes even just like can't fall asleep, insomnia type thing, and and listen to this type of mm-hmm. stuff. There's another artist that is, is, I would say, sort of similar as a Japanese guy called Suzumu Yukota. I've not yeah. heard that name. Yeah, and it's like a one album of his that I was really into. I got into C- I got on CD like in the early two thousands. I bought it randomly because I like the, the cover artwork in a record store and uh, I got it home and I was like, oh, this is, um, this is, there's no beats. <laughs> it's like, it's very like atmospheric mm-hmm. and floaty kind of sound, but it was the perfect, it ended up for me being the perfect music to um, kind of fall asleep to or put, or mm-hmm. just, or not even if you're trying to fall asleep, but just like to lay back and put your headphones on and, um, and just close your eyes and just listen to the, where it's taking you kind of thing and, and totally um, and that's i think where actress is for me as well and sometimes a lot of the time he takes you to places atmospherically that aren't tranquil i wouldn't say it's tranquil kind of relaxing music it still challenges you it challenges you when you're relaxing no it's, some of it strange, yeah. some of it can be described as you know kind of rocky or rigid yeah um you know glitchy no yeah. um but again it's creating this cool vibe and it's creating yeah. a space for your mind to to kind of wander and to kind of you know, it feels like my mind is, you know, doing some urban exploring when I'm listening to it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what are these patterns? You know, where am I going? Where is this taking me? And I feel like, you know, I'm, yeah, it's kind of a concrete jungle kind of vibe sometimes. It's, yeah. it, you know, it's, it, I was going to say, use the word industrial, like yeah. you used before. And some of it, it feels kind of industrial to me using, you know, some of the sounds sound metallic yeah. or like concrete, yeah. you know, pavement, like hard surfaces. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, yeah, I just think he, he, he somehow relates architecture and physical, physical infrastructure with audio infrastructure. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm still exploring that. And I think it was a great opportunity for me to look into this. And it's, it's cool how that happened because you didn't, 
mean to <laughs> was mean for us to be yeah. talking about this but we we got <laughs> we, to we go, yeah. experience that anyway yeah so yeah no i think it's interesting it, it, it so happens because we are talking about this is like it is very an artist that is from like the left field that doesn't really um conform to anything like i don't know if you could even really call it music in some ways like, i was going to say a couple yeah, of his uh, yeah. one of his middle records it's almost not even a, a song yeah a, in any way yeah. it's just soundscapes yeah yeah and using um different instruments in different ways combining instruments to create a new you know virtual instrument quote unquote i have quotes for those of you who are not watching the video right now um but yeah like i said before he i think he's used plastic bags yeah i think in one of his later albums he used a milk frother on Mm -hmm. some stringed instruments okay yeah um and i don't know i have a note of something else he used we can talk about it later but super cool um i think it would be a good time to play another track because i would certainly love to chill to another track of his and yeah um you know extract a little more info let me play the okay i'm going to play the very first song that i heard of his uh, cool his second album called splash when when was that when did you hear that oh um a long time ago i want to say at least five years ago six years ago okay that was a good amount of time um, I, I i i just came across it through spotify i think and um bookmarked it away and um and and that's how it got us to here now that random moment back there led right us to this moment right now <laughs> i love it i love it and this was that track that i, I right. bookmarked it's, Spin called, it. it's called hubble Thank you. 
Hubble by Actress off of his second album called Actress uh, called Splash from Actress. Um, that was so, the first album, uh, first track from that album, and um, it I was, like it. Came out in 2010. Yeah, that was the one that really drew me into his world of, of music. That was that first track. Um, I yeah, just really got into it and I uh, did some looking and um, it came out. Um, he got signed to Honest John's Records, um, which is the album that came out on. And Honest John's uh, is originally a rec- uh, independent record shop that was in Portobello Road in Labrook Grove in London. I like the mushrooms, Portobello. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same spelling as Portobello. It's Porto Bello. Oh, okay, not, I don't know. Not, I don't like not, mushrooms. No, so. Portobello. I right, you don't. I like mushrooms. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I like eating much. My- Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Where are we? What podcast is this? I'd be down for some pizza, though. Maybe there's a little pepperoni, bro. Actually, yeah. And um, 
Yeah, that was like 74, I think. And then um, uh, they formed a record label and Damon Albarn of Blur and Gorillaz got involved in forming the record label Honest John's. Mm-hmm. And, um, and uh, you know, actress assigned to them. And uh, yeah, it's funny that I didn't know that Honest John's was a record, lab- uh, record store in Labrook Grove because every time I go to London, I stay in Labrook Grove. Really? Grove, and I always see Damon Albarn knocking around. You've um, seen him walking around? Uh, I, no, I see him the last two times I've been there. He's been drinking outside of the, his local pub there. Really? Yeah. And I've like walked past I, on two separate years, on two separate occasions. I walked past this pub and he, both times I walked past Damon Albarn was sitting out there. Like just He's probably never moved from those. Ha- having a drink and smoking. Yeah. Well, because the Gorilla Studio is in the same neighborhood as well. Okay. Yeah, they have wow. this like. You didn't say what's stuff. up? You didn't say what's up, Dan? <sighs> No, I was like, I was with someone else at the time. Let me buy you a there. beer. Let me buy you a pint. I mean, man. I would Come on. Next time I'm there, I'm just going to go in and get a pint and go sit outside. And next, like, hey, what's up, Damon? Next time you go, <laughs> take me with you. Yeah, exactly. That's one of the places on our sightseeing tour of London. All right. And we'll do a show of Rooster Grooves from London as well. Once in- COVID's over, we'll, we'll do that. Rooster Grooves is going international, we'll baby. international, yeah. Cool. Um, so, I mean, that was yeah. a cool track. Yeah. I like that one as well. Um so I guess a little bit on this guy's setup, yeah. he, he started using Reason as his DAW, okay. um, as far as I know. And yeah. I think, you know, at that, at that time, I don't think Ableton was there, and I think he might have used some other DAWs in the future. But mm-hmm. basically, his setup was a pair of turntables, a laptop, and some records okay. that, you know, he probably dug for, had lying around or whatever. Yeah. Because um, he did some DJing and stuff, right? He Yeah, know, he did, uh, actually, I think... Before he started making music, he was a DJ, and he mm-hmm. was he got him really like, after he got injured from doing the football stuff. He got into DJing, and he got really heavily involved in that sort of club culture in, in London, right. in the UK. Um, and yeah, which is and then led him on to create music. Yeah, mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah, so he started he he kind of started making stuff as just like a, experimental stuff. Yeah, um, like like we've seen that's what he's he's capable of, and that's what he's kind of known for. Mm. Um, but he never he I think he started and he wasn't really thinking about like tracks yeah like I need a, here's a track and here's what I want to show and here's what I want to do it was more like I'm just going to start messing with some sounds yeah and just kind of build something yeah and then I'll stop when I stop yeah so just kind of taking that uh, a kind of a casual approach without like I'm trying to get here I have this goal I need to get this many views on Spotify or whatever yeah. You know what I mean? Not no, he's not, but he doesn't give a shit about that. It doesn't seem obviously, like yeah. yeah. And I, I respect him for that reason because he's just like, I'm going to do this, and he knows it's a niche kind of thing. Yeah. Um, one of the cool things that I saw he said was like he knows it's a niche thing, but you know, there's a lot of people around the world, and and there's an audience for just about anything you can think of. Yeah. And I think that's a cool way to to go about it. Like, do something that you care about, that you really care about, and that you that you that resonates with you and that makes you happy and that that fulfills your you know explorative nature your curiosity i think that's where he's coming from with you know how he generally got started you know obviously he's he's a creative guy he's intelligent he was doing soccer um i saw another interview where you know he, he 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 sees himself as a scientist yeah you know not just a musician in any way you know he's a he's a producer he's a creative entity yeah. and and you know creating audio waves is just one way he's he's trying to release his creativity and his his personality and and you know it's a it's a form of expression of his um introspection yeah you know what i mean yeah i don't know if i know what i mean no yeah no very <laughs> much so yeah if you listeners and viewers go out there and I I I only saw like two or three interviews of them that you can see. Um, some of them were really short, um, but he, yeah, like I said earlier, intense is is how I would say it because he's he he definitely he said in one of those interviews he thinks a lot and he's always mm-hmm. um, thinking about things and observing things around him. And yeah, he seems to really internalize that and then put it through his music. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said, yeah, he doesn't really see himself as a musician. He sees himself more as a scientist. Um, um, he has this record label as well. I think it's called uh, Work Discs or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, I think it, it started as two words, work 
yeah. discs and then eventually yeah. turned into work discs as one word like there you go yeah and um and in one interview he said oh it's not really a label it's an aesthetic <laughs> yeah and he said that for various reasons i think one one of the reasons he later said in that interview is because the music industry has changed and record labels have changed and the nature of being a record label has changed to the point where you know it's not the same as it was just conventionally in a business model of putting up music kind of thing mm -hmm. so he sees it as less of a record label and more of as an as an aesthetic um something that could probably extend into other other things down the road uh beyond music he said right right now the incant the incantation in, in, incarnation no oh, there you go that's the, <laughs> see now uh, i don't know what words i'm saying vocabulary uh, um is through music and putting out music but he said that could extend into other things not maybe not even media it could be anything like really um yeah this guy doesn't like to box himself in into yeah. one little thing even yeah. though he's you know, he's just, I'm going to do some experimental stuff. I don't have a goal. I don't have a, I'm not going to make a track. It doesn't have to be this many minutes. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm boxing myself in in any way. Yeah. He's going to do what he wants for this, for the sake of experimentation. Yeah. For the sake of, you know, allowing his creativity and his imagination to run wild using the, the, the few things that he has. Yeah. And, and one of my favorite things that I saw that he said was that, you know, he doesn't have a lot of, um, stuff a lot of instruments and equipment to use like i said he just has like turntables he, at least he started with turntables laptops some records mm -hmm. some basic recording equipment mm -hmm. and and kind of his his perspective that he comes at this with is like what do i have like where am i what, what do i have available to me and how can i use that to to mm -hmm. create something not hmm well i need that one that one instrument or i need that one computer to do this or i need this plugin if i want to do this so yeah you know what i mean so he's just like what do i have available and how can i use that to get where i want to go well that brings up an interesting thing about the different ways at coming to music and creating music right because uh throughout our, uh, our episodes i'm bringing a few things to mind when you talk about that um one of them is um you know, how we talked about that uh, Krungbin thing of putting yourself in a box and only having like, so, like you're limiting yourself on purpose. Limiting yourself in order to be more yeah proficiently creative. Yeah. So there's that approach of, of just having like one guitar and one amp and mm -hmm. one set of pedals and you can see how many different combinations of things you can come up with with that setup. And then you've got someone like Tori Imoir who um, creates a playlist of songs and he's really listening to it for the chord progressions, but also the production techniques, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I'm imagining, for, I don't think we talked about this at the time and I'm just, and I don't know this for sure, but I'm imagining if he's listening to music for the production techniques, he's trying to replicate those production techniques. Mm -hmm. So he's coming at it from a perspective of, um, you know, uh, how can I create the certain drum sound and then what, what do I need to get to create that drum sound kind right. of thing? You know, and then you've got someone like Adrian Young, who's just, you know, all live instrumentation and no computers and all analog, you know, and Insane. doing it that way. And, you know, and, and then so now we have someone like Actress. And the other thing I wanted to say about the way he makes music is I don't know if this is still true today, but it was true in his early years as he didn't never use the metronome. So I don't know if people uh, out there like make music, but um, the metronome is the click, it's the click track, it's what keeps you in time. Um, especially if you're making music with a computer, it forces you to use that. Mm -hmm. Even just the grid, like you have to type a tempo in and you there's have to like do that. Lines, there's a grid, it's yeah. gotta be, it automatically yeah. has the click going. And uh, you know, he goes against that. And I found myself having to go against that as well, like because the click is fine and the grid is fine on computer-based music making workstations. But sometimes, you know, you'll be like, let me just like switch all of that snapping off and all that shit and just like, just nudge this wave file over a couple of things and it makes it more organic sounding because, mm -hmm. because live music is not rigid and it's not like too... It's not computerized, uh, it's not perfect, yeah. it's not beat by perfect beat. Yeah. It's live, it's different, Yeah, it's human. Yeah, and, and that's like back in the day, like what created like i think even krongbin said this um dj the drummer said that you know 
the beginning of the track would be one tempo and then like by the end of the track it's like sped up kind of thing right because they were just live and naturally playing it and and to come back to Atrus and the fact that he doesn't use a metronome i think that's probably like the weird thing is about him it Atrus's music sounds very glitchy and very futuristic and very electronic um but at the same time there's a lot of organicness in there like he doesn't use the metronome which then introduces kind of a flow in time which is natural within humans and and humans that play music but then he also uses these organic sounds and and feel recordings right. in, into his music so even though it's like futuristic and hard and edgy and electronic there's a lot of organicness going into it somehow yeah it's good the metronome is good and we're drawn to that you know you hear a that four on the floor beat doof, 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 yeah. doof, in a lot of music and and yeah and it works really well for like house music and stuff yeah like that, and yeah. people respond to that as humans our brain looks for patterns that's yeah. what we do as people yeah that's why we see like oh i recognize that person i've seen you do that before and i see why is this happening the same way yeah you know blah 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 we're all patterns it's time we have our seconds our minutes our days our calendars of the year and we're super drawn to patterns mm. and so that helps a lot um that's why music is good because you can you can guess what's going to happen like what was do, do, it's do. predictable where you can like it's yeah predictable. and you can like dance to it and begin I, to I it i bet the next like, four beats all now here's the chorus <laughs> ah! you yeah. know you know it's coming and you yeah. can anticipate it and then it gives it to you yeah um and that's super satisfying and so he's kind of writing the line between between that that rigid here's what's coming you know the beat here it's mm. coming but it's a little off it's a little glitchy it's a little odd yeah and so you get that vibe like you kind of know what's coming because you can kind of feel the beat that he's created but it's not exactly perfect like a computerized version of that would be yeah yeah. um so that leaves a lot of bit um it, it leaves a lot into your own personal interpretation yeah. about how it makes you feel i guess yeah, yeah um you know like i said he's he's doing this for the purpose of exploring and the purpose of um and doing it for himself he's not creating these tracks for other people yeah necessarily he's not trying to make money he's not trying to get views or, or streams yeah. i think he makes it for himself yeah. you know as as he said like as he's a scientist yeah he's exploring he's um he's doing experiments yeah essentially so there's like a i haven't heard him say this or read about it in any of his interviews but for me like like we said there's like there is some organicness to the way he creates music without the metronome and with the field recordings and right and the organic sounds and also he um um said you know he very much listens to classical music and it's been a few projects where he's done um he's actually collaborated with orchestras like directly mm -hmm. on like projects kind of thing um for his one album in particular um which is called lagos Lagos. yeah uh, with the London Contemporary Orchestras, who he right. collaborated on that with. That's the last album that he's put out. That's the most recent. Um, no, there's another one after that. Acid? Yeah. Um, off, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm just way behind here? Uh, his <laughs> most recent <laughs> album is called Karma and Desire. came out in 2020. Oh, yeah. I didn't even put that on my notes. Um, it's, got, <laughs> it's got Sampha on there. Sampha's a great singer. Okay, yeah. She's come up a couple in, in a couple of our episodes as well. He. He, I'm sorry, I don't. Sample. You guys, I don't know what I'm talking about here. Okay. No, but hey, we're here. He we're here to learn along with everybody else. Exactly. Yeah. And this is a learning journey. So. And Jesse is learning, as well. I like I'm to think. <laughs> I, sometimes I learn. Um, no, so I was saying, like, uh, you know, he's he's collaborated, and we can talk about all of this. I'm just going to blurt it all out right now. Get so, it out. Let's do it. You know, and creating with these orchestras. And also, he has created an artificial intelligence. Right. For his live shows, like visuals? And Wolf was over recording. He, he did a, a, a short album that I don't think is on streaming platforms called Young Paint. And basically, uh, the concept behind this is he's trying to build an artificial intelligence computer programming system that creates music by itself. Okay. I wasn't aware that he was doing that. I was thinking it was... Yeah. What I was reading about was more some of the visual components of what he was doing. Yeah, no, he did that as well. He did like mm -hmm. the live shows and that sort of stuff. Yeah, right. but, but sonically and audio wise, he's trying to, he has like developers that are working on this for him. Um, and he used it a little bit like live 
um very that, cool yeah and uh so he's his basically his concept and i think he yeah, he did it for young paint and he said it was a 50 70 split where oh siri just came on i didn't say siri <laughs> come on we're in a podcast here siri hello 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 siri well, I can't switch it off now. Apple. Um, uh, yeah, he... Uh, yeah, 50, 70 split on that album. Like uh, 70% was him and 50% was the computer. Mm-hmm. So basically, he'd like developed this computer to be able to create music on demand. Like he'd like throw some instructions into it about like, you know, I want some drums or I want like this, like this mood or whatever it's pretty weird it's kind of scary to me it's kind of scary and he like create and then he left it to run and it created these sounds and then he listened to those sounds and then he edited them down and you know manipulated them for his own tastes and for his own and so he's not he's not writing this this code himself he's he's working with a team of other people who are helping him develop this infrastructure and these these codes and in these computers i don't know who but i think yeah he has some people Mm -hmm. doing it for him and um um you know and the interviewer said yeah because it was he said 50 70 split and the interviewer was like well uh 70 percent you and he Mm. was like yeah and he was like but he wants to get a point where it's 50 50. Mm. and i'm like so this is interesting like scary world of um you know it's interesting he's exploring it in this way um i don't know how you would use it i think the way he used it on young paint is interesting to me where you just let the the computer do random shit and mm-hmm. then you listen back to it and you're like yeah that's crap that's crap well, i'm gonna take this bit i'm gonna loop this yeah you know that's that's okay because you're still contributing to the the creative process but if machines start like, i mean i don't know this he the, might he might very well be the only person that's pioneering complete i don't know if that probably not true probably other people are doing it but like computer computers making the music kind of thing right you know which is i think is interesting for him as an experimental thing and the way he thinks obviously we don't want this to be the way you know musically uh, it's he, it, I, I think you and I are on the same page. Of for like, sure, you know, it's like it's just that's a scary world. It's like, an interesting like, thing because you know people did not like when Bob Dylan used an, a, a, an electric guitar for the first time either. Yeah, that was considered you know radical or too weird or you know non conventional. Mm-hmm. And you know, hmm, I'm not used to this. That mm-hmm. means it's wrong. You know, yeah. and we're just not used to AI. But yeah. it seems in my lifetime that it's um it's an up and coming thing. It doesn't seem like anybody's stopping it from happening yeah and it's going to be more and more influential as we grow and move through time yeah and so is that wrong if he's he's the one creating the ai you know and he's helping curate what's happening yeah you have to have some kind of control over what it's doing you can tell a computer i want only flute music well we're not at that stage where computers can think for themselves god forbid i mean that's like the premise of fucking terminator right like we we're say, close there we jay <laughs> jay we're getting close and it's getting scary but i mean if you're yeah. if you if did you if one it would just say hypothetically if it was one person yeah and i created this software yeah this ai software that created a song yeah did i create that um if you created the software that created yeah it? just um, all in-house in my one room i created i coded my own software I made it run through and it came out with a song that vibrates through my speakers. Who is the creator? Well, that's interesting. That brings out some interesting copyright issues, right? He wins the, the copyright if the machine created it. I'm is going it public I'm go- domain. <laughs> I'm or? going to, to court against my computer. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> for for those that, that streaming yeah. revenue, that yeah, sweet yeah, Spotify yeah. streaming revenue, those cents on the dollar. I mean, I guess for at least for Atris, probably he does because, you know he's developing his own software he's not using something else that other people are creating in this space mm-hmm. he's he's creating something himself which is probably not too much dissimilar to like other you know just to electronic music in general like um so one of the projects he did was um i'm not sure what it was for it was a song or something but it was influenced by stockhausen Karl Heinz stockhausen and he was a German composer that 
uh, lived from 1928 to nice. 2007. I like, like, I love when you bring some history to our podcast. Bring some history. Jay. Yeah, he, uh, he, was, he was controversial in his time because he was a classical composer, but he started to introduce electronic um, um, uh, components and approaches into making his music kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, that could have been seen scary back in that time, you know. Right. Um, there's a picture of him on Wikipedia if you go there, and he's like, you know, he looks like a mad scientist, and he's like plugging all these cables into machines and stuff like that. Right. Um, I mean, the more and more we, we talk about actress, yeah. the, the more and more I see him as a mad scientist. Yeah. Who's sure. who's just in his lair, wherever you know, his studio in in the UK, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he's not stopping at using reason in his DAW. He's like, I, I need to work with this orchestra yeah. and these computer engineers. Yeah. And I need to create something that's blending all of this together yeah. that's never happened before. Yeah. Which it's, is, I think, is interesting. It, it, at the very I mean, least, we don't, we it's don't interesting. Want, we don't want the whole of music to go this way. But if one corner mm-hmm. of one artist's life is going that way, yeah. I think that's fine. You totally. Know, like, it's experimental and it's interesting Let's, to, you know. You want to get into his discography a little bit? Yeah, sure. We, we played something off his EP at the first place. Um, in 2008, he came out with his first full-length LP, Hazyville. Yeah. Pretty cool. It's, it's, you know, it's rough. It's grainy. It's energetic. Yeah. Um, it's it, quiet. It's like lo-fi. That's, that's the yeah, lo-fi you could, sounding one, right? Yeah, yeah. totally. It's, it could be lo-fi. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's experimental for sure. Yeah. Um, and it's really great. It's cool. It's mm-hmm. good. I think it, it's it's a it encapsulates what what he's about and mm-hmm. at least where he came from and obviously he's on his way somewhere mm-hmm. and I don't know if anybody knows exactly where he wants to go, <laughs> um, you know the more we're talking about this, yeah. um, but it's a it's a good record and it kind of you know yeah. it set him on his journey as yeah. a as a a fundamental foundation for for where he was starting from I guess yeah, yeah. Um, and it's good it's cool yeah it you know I don't know do, do you uh, have anything to say about it. Um, no, not just the fact that it sounds very lo-fi. Yeah, yeah, um, it's good though. I know I would. I listen to it. It's cool. It's fun. Yeah. I don't know. I I usually say on these episodes like where I would start mm. with with these artists, <laughs> and you know you could start there. And, and you know I mean I think with off actress, the top of my, I don't think it really matters where you start. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's. You know, he's done some different things. Um, his most recent album is actually pretty good. Um, I think it's probably the most polished and less, probably, you know, the most accessible maybe right. of all yeah. of his work, mm-hmm. um, which is weird to say. Um, he has a lot of releases that aren't really available on streaming platforms. I know that's how people listen to music these days, but, you know, he's had releases that aren't on there, like, especially his first debut EP and a few and the young paint thing is not on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Um, I think sometimes you gotta, you know, go back to basics a little bit. If you know, um, all these artists as experimental as you want to be, you can't be too weird and abstract. Yeah. If you're that weird and abstract and it, and people cannot connect with you at all, then that's not really going to set you on a trajectory for success. So, yeah. uh, and, and I guess I, I'm bringing into this a little bit, you know, some marketing technique yeah. and stuff. Cause you can make the weirdest stuff, you know, you can be like, my, my music's not even recorded, you know, <laughs> have you heard it? It's so underground. It's not even recorded. You have yeah. to come to a show. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's only live. You heard the album. Yeah. Like, that's that, that was it. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Um, and so maybe, I don't know if that's a technique of his and he's like, okay, well, let me bring it back to basics. Let me give somebody give the world something that they can kind of relate to a little bit more than whatever it was doing before. To be honest, I don't think he thinks about anything like that. I, I think he's just his own, in his own world and creating his own thing. And totally. His own, his own. He's almost kind of like a philosopher or a writer where he's like, goes inside himself and comes up with these ideas and then writes it down and then shares it sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, as if a philosopher is writing down his thoughts and his ideas about yeah. the world, but you no, know, he's creating you no know, those thoughts. Like and these ideas are an these, album. He comes up with these succinct thoughts and mm-hmm. then puts them out into the world totally. and then he moves on or maybe he, or maybe it's like his thesis, like every album is his thesis and yeah. you know, and then he's like, his next album is like a, a continuation and built upon that previous idea kind of thing. And right. 
I mean, because if you see him as a scientist and he says he's a scientist and not a musician, then it kind of, as we're talking about, I didn't even think about this, but as we're talking about it, like that makes me, it makes a bit of sense kind mm -hmm. of thing in that way. Um, yeah, I mean. So, so therefore what I'm saying is like, I don't think he thinks about marketing. He doesn't think about being an artist. He doesn't think about. He doesn't music. let that get in the way of what he's trying to accomplish. Yeah, he's just trying to create. It's like, not a variable. These soundscapes and he might even just. Yeah, because I mean, the live component as well of the AI stuff is um, is different. Like he said in that interview, I think you saw as well. I don't know where he was. It was somewhere in Eastern Europe or maybe or something like that um, at this music what? festival. Yeah, I think uh, I saw that one. Which one? Yeah, with with the lady that's interviewing him on the couch. And yeah, the, right. Yeah, at yeah. the hotel room lobby or something like that. Yeah, and he was saying like he missed his flight and so he was stayed in the hotel room at Heathrow. And he thought he wasn't going to make it for the show. So he started to think about how he could do the show remotely <laughs> Yeah. by basically emailing the sound <laughs> engineer and being like, uh, here are the coordinates. He said coordinates. I don't even know what that means, what he meant by that. Well, um, I mean, no, but like, here are the files and stuff like that. Here's my AI yeah. software. Just give him that. Just like, just press hit play, play and, yeah, yeah. and uh, project me through my, you know, what they do with like a... Uh, uh, Who was two, it? two pack with the hologram yeah things, the right? hologram that was what i was thinking of exactly <laughs> just hologram yeah, me when and you would be there, give yeah. them the ai and there's my show just send me the check yeah and he said he's like <laughs> actually he wants to be able to get to a point where he does that and now it's covid times and we haven't heard from him for a little bit so, so maybe this guy has been ahead of the ball the whole he's time been ahead of the fucking curve the whole time. yeah or yeah, yeah he's on the ball head of the curve there that's how you do it the ball. I'm, I'm mixing up my my phrase well, he, he is a soccer player so maybe he is head of the ball this there guy you know. is because, because that's how you play soccer. soccer you run ahead of the ball and then it gets past you and then you score the goal so. boom we got <laughs> soccer knowledge on this episode we got ai in this episode who knew oh this my god crazy shit tupac tupac come in to this one okay so i mean let's 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 jump ahead so he had Hazyville 2008. Yeah. Grainy, energetic, quiet, experimental. In 2010, June, that is, Splash came out. Yeah. And there's a Z in there. Yeah. S P L A Z S H, if I'm correct. Yeah. This one, I feel like, uh, had a little bit more variety. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was featuring a little bit of some old school um, disco techno. Yeah, that was the album. That was the track from that. That's album. where that came from. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is, he's, he's really diving into the UK electronic music scene where he comes yeah, yeah. from, obviously. Um, and then he's also hitting some more ambient musical influences, possibly came to mind for me, Brian Eno. Yeah. You know, yeah, kind yeah. of the ambient, yeah. long form, yeah. not poppy, not more soundscape. A little bit more classic. Like it, mm -hmm. maybe this is modern classical music if you think about it. Yeah. Like artists like Brian Eno and maybe even actress and some of the things he's doing. It's right. Like the because classical doesn't have to it always involve stringed instruments. That's the that's what's synonymous with a lot of people and you know that's what I would think oh classical? I'm thinking yeah. da, 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 da. It's yeah, like yeah. strings, woodwinds yeah, you know your classic Beethoven, Mozart stuff. Yeah, which sounds beautiful and great, but that's yeah. not super popular today. Yeah, as far as you know, pop, popular yeah, music yeah, yeah. Um, on syndicated radio stations and whatnot. <laughs> We're still yeah. with we got your you know four on the floor beats. We got your synths. We got guitars yeah. and some poppy melodies over the top. Yeah, yeah, and you know strings are prevalent, of course. Strings are still in there. They're in their tracks. Yeah, no. Yeah. You know, which is something cool, which is why it was cool even not that long ago, but a while ago in the 60s when Beatles come out with something like yeah. um, like Eleanor Rigby. Yeah. And, you know, this poppy band coming out with something that's literally just vocals and strings. Mm -hmm. Kind of experimental for the time, maybe. Yeah. Maybe a little ahead of, it, ahead of its time, you could say. Yeah. Um, it would be kind of cool. I think there's a lot of space to go back to that, having... I mean, I love strings. Like I, uh, yeah, I seems, always want to try and put strings in every track I try and make it's, myself. It's like, cin yeah. cinematic. It's dramatic. Yeah, yeah. Chris mood. I think I, I like it for the mood. Uh huh. Like you know, it's emotional. Yeah, for sure. It's probably the most emotional. Well, not the most, but you know, it, it definitely is. Can layer a mood with all of the strings, instruments, yeah. like playing certain it, it like creates, chords and like yeah notes and stuff. Totally, it creates a nice depth. Yeah, emotional depth. Yeah, 
I would say. Um, so that's a cool record too, Splash, 2010. Yeah. Um, 2014 came out with Ghettoville. Yeah. Um, and I like the... That third... one's life, really life wise as well, actually. I think that was the one I was thinking about when I thought about lo-fi. That oh, sounds, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like it's Beat Machines recorded to tape or something like that mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Um, off Right off the bat, like the album cover is cool. It, it seems like... I mean, it looks like um, somebody's sketching out like some blueprints kind of thing. Yeah, like, like they're like it looks like some sketching with a pencil on a paper. Yeah, like they're trying to come up with an idea. Architect. Someone on YouTube said he's he's like an architect. Right. But it's exactly. Like architect. Random drawing sketches. Right. The album cover for that. Yeah, yeah and I, I would even yeah go far to say is a lot of the the music on there sound kind of more you know, they don't sound like finished tracks yeah but they could they sound like um sketches yeah, yeah. and ideas for tracks but they do they do hit the mark as far as vibes and mood go yeah. and i think that's what he's really going for yeah and for that reason i think he hits the mark but this album is it's weird it's ambient yeah. challenging yeah more so than the last two albums i would say maybe it's it's dark it's moody but it is gratifying um yeah. i'm just i'm going through some of my notes you know some of it's loud some of it's hard hitting yeah. and some of it's very ambient and soft yeah um so it has some dynamic to it um one of the things that i thought was cool and it is it is it's 70 minutes long that's pretty long that's pretty beastly yeah 16 tracks for these days most people mm-hmm. are coming out with like 35 minute albums oh, or 40 I got my, minutes. my full lp 26 <laughs> minutes exactly um but yeah, one of the cool things that I thought he said was, you know, he's he was um, he was thinking about the word dark. Yeah. And and you, you you think about music that's dark, you can think of grunge or you know, maybe metal or something like that. Mm-hmm. Some moody, depressing stuff. Yeah. Stuff like, which is very good and it's awesome anytime music can make you feel a certain way. Yeah. And I think music's doing a great job if it makes you feel a certain way, especially if it's trying to make you feel that way that it's intending to. Yeah. Um, but I, I was cool that he was saying how dark doesn't necessarily have to be like bad. You know, we're looking yeah. at like light and dark. It doesn't darkness it doesn't have to be a negative connotation. Yeah. It's, it, it's just kind of part of the experience and you can delve into that and it doesn't have to be you know bad or mean or heavy but dark is just like kind of the antithesis of light well you come back to the basic uh musical thing of major minor chords right and, right you know yeah the first thing you learn when you're young is like major is happy and minor mm-hmm. is sad yeah and, and like, you know you're coming up as a musician just or just as a person in general and you just you're instilled with these ideas yeah. that don't necessarily have to be true. Yeah, because minor is not sad. Like, it doesn't have to be sad. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. like I said, like I've, in previous episodes, like when I've created music in the past, I've I've tended towards like the minor uh, scale of things, and and people have told me, oh, well, that sounds like dark and sad kind of thing. Uh-huh. But it's like, yeah, I mean, I I just I find there's more mood for me in music that has that sort of spectrum of chords and sounds i feel i mean i it's not always across the board i feel the same way with with mine with major chords and things that sound happier i get i still get feeling out of it Mm -hmm. but um but yeah the but the dark thing yeah it's not negative it doesn't have to be negative it could be introspective and it can be atmospheric and it can be thoughtful and yeah it's it's part of the human experience yeah yeah. I don't know anybody in their life who's just been like, I've always been happy every day for all 24 hours of yeah, every day. Got some of that Prozac, maybe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> They're just popping it, popping it, bro. Give me a Prozac. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm always happy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, happy is fleeting. Happy is, you know, joy. It's it's the same as, you know, or you could say the opposite, whatever, of anger. Like, they're feelings that are fleeting and they're not, they're, they are temporary. Yeah. You don't, you're not angry forever. You know, most of the time, hopefully. Hopefully not. Yeah. You're also not happy forever. Yeah. And I, I don't know if we spoke about it in another episode or just off air, but it's good to be happy, but don't expect to be happy 24 hours of the day. Yeah. Happy is a, a, a short, fleeting feeling sometimes. And, you know, I think it's, I think it's better to, to be content throughout your day, through everyday life and, yeah. and for your life in general, because happy is happy is a happy a, a peak I, you know it's it, yeah, I things think come in waves and stuff and you can't 
afford to be happy all the time. That's that's a high peak. I think they're, feeling. they're you know, uh, happy is like a special peak moment that mm-hmm. is reserved yeah, it's for special. good times. You know, and sad is, uh, is is another peak moment in the opposite direction. Right. And there's a reserve for certain times as well, like maybe the death or something like that or something and sad that, happens in your life. But like, exactly. You know, but you can't, like, it's the concept of yin and yang, right? You can't have good without bad. We can't have can't life have, without death. You can't have positive without negative. Like, it's, it's a balance. And it's like, exactly. as long as you can try and be somewhat balanced mm-hmm. in the middle a little bit, um, you know, I'll share something very personal right now. I think like when I was younger, this is the way I always explained it to people. Like my, my lows were low and my highs were high. Like right. it was very drastic kind of thing. Very dynamic. The, yeah. The older I've gotten, like the less either of those peaks have gotten, probably because I've learned things, I've had life experience, I've gone through different things. I've experienced sad situations and happy situations kind of thing. And whatever it is, I don't know, but like those peaks have be- become like less for me sort of thing. Right. And maybe that's what happens just in life when you get older is like you start off like that and then you like the older you get, the more you kind of even out and then chill. Because you know things. Die. Like, <laughs> <laughs> then you die. <laughs> End of podcast. That was, that was dark. Thanks for listening. Yeah, everyone. I ended on a dark note there. I'm yeah. just kidding. Death is part of life. It's not dark. Exactly. And and things are sad and you can feel them. And these are what emotions are, but they're temporary and they don't have to dictate how you feel the rest of your life. Mm. And it's important to feel these things. And that's, that's what the human experience is. And that's beautiful. Yeah. But, you know, we wouldn't be alive if we couldn't die. Yeah. It would be the same if it, it's inherent to life. You know, death is, is life and life, life is death. Yeah. And if you see these dynamics, that can help with these peaks you know you don't yeah. but it's it's also okay like um what actress is doing yeah. is he's you can just explore one of these emotions yeah. all you want you know he's he's exercising his ability his you freedom still, to you, it's still like in the way of traditional music you can still find your own way you resonate with it exactly the same you would with like a beatles song or any mm-hmm. other song you find your own meaning in it Right, exactly. Even though there's no lyrics or whatever, you find yeah. your own meaning and connection to it sort of thing. Totally. Yeah. And it's it's okay and it's it's healthy to explore these feelings, even if it's a bad or negative feeling. Yeah. It's just as much as the human experience as joy or happiness. Yeah. And this guy's not afraid to explore. That's admirable. That's cool. That's why I respect actress. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think this is a cool guy. Ghettoville, 2014. Cool album. Um, let's move on to R.I.P. Or would you say Rip? I don't know. R.I.P. A lot of people I, thought it was going to be his last ever album because of the way he released it and this, his statement around it or something like that. Yeah. What, what did he say? Let me see if I can find this. Right. Yeah. Pull um, that up. Um, I think I did see that he explained it. Or he would say it's R.I.P., but he doesn't care if you call it Rip. You can call it, pronounce it however you want. Yeah. R period I period P period however you want to say it yeah um but yeah super cool so he's, he's continuing to explore different sounds moods it's pretty abstract this album for me I listened to to it and wrote these notes and it 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 maybe wasn't as cohesive as some of the other ones mm-hmm. it's a little bit like here it's there I didn't really listen to it's, it that much to be honest with you for sure album. I mean yeah, yeah that's okay um, but yeah, I, I didn't get as much cohesive. Maybe I got to listen to it again, but I don't think that was his goal. Yeah. I don't think he has a goal to be like, I want to make a cohesive record, like he, necessarily. So his statement he said about that, <clears throat> they said it was a cryptic press release. Um, he, he described the album as a black tinted conclusion of the actress image mm. and signed the message off with RIP Music 2014. So people thought that was kind of, don't know what he's talking about. Like, is this his last thing he's released? I mean, if you don't explain and you say <laughs> "rip actress," yeah, I mean, it could stand for something else. He'd be like, "Really impressive performance." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but he's leaving it up to the people, and he didn't tell them. So I don't know. I get that. No, maybe you know this guy's smart. He's intelligent. Well, he's I mean, he's this, marketing. I guess that line about you know black tinted conclusion of the actress image. I mean, he, yeah, he used the word conclusion. The The name of the thing is R.I.P. 
Yeah. It's a little bit of a theme. Uh, so uh, we talked about death and life, and now we're on this RIP. Um, and he did mention that in an interview about um, he kind of has notions about I th- it's tied in with his artificial intelligence thing mm-hmm. about how he would like maybe to still be able to perform live after he's dead. Okay, so he is, he really does. Yeah, he's so getting his AI meaning that his AI shit could maybe take over and continue being actress after he's dead and buried. He didn't really say it in that way, but I think he's still thinking through it and airing out. It sounds like he might, the, he might be onto something really big that nobody's but, yeah, paying attention to, but he's like because he's deep into this, yeah. And like, he death is actually an occurrence a lot in, in actress's stuff. Um, and his sounds and the things he said, um, and, and especially within that, like, can AI perform for him live after he's gone? And, and you know, I mean, it's I been know, proven so. to be able to happen. Maybe he's already. No, I don't want to I mean, say this. Well, I mean, you know, Michael Jackson's come out with music. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, from unreleased material that yeah. you know other producers. Prince, and, they found a bunch of right. unreleased music in Prince's vault and after he passed away. We've proven that you can recreate holograms of artists. Tupac performed live so, at a festival. Yeah, so it's basically possible. I wouldn't doubt that he's, he wants to do this. And yeah. I mean, what a cool thing to do. Yeah. Because um, as far as I know, I mean, like they didn't. Michael Jackson didn't go on a whole tour. Tupac didn't go on a whole tour of holograms and unreleased music. Yeah, it was kind of a one. It was one show kind of thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. And maybe he wants to do something like that, but bigger and better. Maybe yeah. more more longevity. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but this is a cool album. Yeah. It. I think it is. It's focused more on textures and moods than it is big concepts or you know individual yeah. tracks with. Uh, yeah. their own kind of thing going on um but yeah i mean it's kind of a little bit all over the place it's a little bit scatterbrained but it's very energetic and and cool yeah um that's a good record all right it, it's yeah yeah it, it you know but again it's pretty the, his stuff is pretty whack so <laughs> <laughs> whack in a good way no in a good way for sure because you know they use whack in a bad way as well so it's not oh whack, really whack. yeah yeah a lot of the rappers and all that and hip-hop people i've been hanging maybe. around with they'll be like that's whack I'm like i think i think they mean that's bad i don't know I could maybe i'm using that word wrong i mean maybe i'm, I'm just, wrong maybe i'm maybe, oh, no no you're like, probably right i'm just <laughs> i'm saying whack as in um non conformative it's out of whack <laughs> Yeah, maybe whack, you get, it, whack is normal some, and it's out of whack. Sometimes you got to be out of whack to be in whack. Yin yang. Are you in whack or are you out of whack? In yang, out whack. Whack whack. Whack 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 whack. Okay, so I don't know if I wrote these down wrong. Then after that, he came out with 2017's Acid. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know how it's, you pronounce it. But yeah, A Z D is it? It's A Z D. I think it's pronounced Acid. I looked it up. Good. Acid. Okay. Acid. All right. So 2017, yeah, it's it's Oriental Classic Rave. Oriental um, Classic Rave. Balinese Warehouse Techno. Um, and, and this one, and it's a cool album cover. It's like a two hands kind of together. Yeah. And one's chrome. And, this, and one's a, a normal hand. Let's like, uh, play a track of it. Yeah, that, I would love to. That's great. Um, because I saw they made a music video of this as well came out on ninja tune the music video is, is weird as well but it's cool and it's very bold it's not whack though it's not uh, or maybe it is you tell me <laughs> it's not whack <laughs> but the name of this is whack i don't know x22 r m e which is pronounced extreme oh uh, what the fuck yeah now that makes sense. i looked that up <sighs> see it, it makes sense once you ma- once you see it now i get it it x right extreme, yeah there you go that's an extreme thing. Thank you. 
Everything has different meanings. You can look at something and it has, it has obviously one stated meaning, but it can be determined in so many different ways. And also, um, people collect, um, collect these possessions that really don't mean anything to anybody else, but mean something to them. Do you ever see that film Ex Machina or Ex Machina? Ex Machina? Is yeah. the, that's the way I pronounce that at least. Okay, yeah. Do you see it? I love that film. That's great. It's a great film. What do you have <laughs> what do you have to say about it? Why are we talking about it? I was just gonna say, because in a way, like, do you think like actress da um David Cunningham is uh or Darren Cunningham, sorry. Do you think he's like the guy? The mad scientist? I could totally right. see him. Yeah. being producing that ha that cool house in the middle of the forest yeah some lush with all his experimentation forest with a river going by and he's mad scientist being like <laughs> i'm creating some ai to to and holograms to for yeah. my music the only reason i say that is because everything we talked about ai and also the album color for acid azd uh with his hand touching the incomplete cy cyborg right. hand is what it kind of looks like um it's like I'm building something, but it's not complete yet. Yeah, and it kind so of gives you that idea like, hey, well, that, the like, human yeah. edge, you know, is touching this yeah. um, robotic or yeah, yeah, yeah. intelligent design edge. Yeah. And, and I think you know, he might have used some of that AI technology in creating that music on that album because I think that came out after Young Paint, I think. Okay. I wouldn't so, doubt it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that whole album is kind of um, um, centered or at least coming from coming from some kind of um chrome it's 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 meant to to reflect a, a kind of chrome mm -hmm. i don't know how to say what i'm trying to say but it, it has something to do with chrome it, it reflects yeah and um i don't know do i have any notes about that the music reflects itself yeah it's chromatic it's theater. like the the music in the album and in, in whole you know along with the album art is kind of themed around yeah this chrome and maybe like you said ai in general merging with the human touch so yeah, yeah. um which could be a you know which is kind of what you, what, what ex machina is about yeah is, i is, mean that's like the the whole thing right i mean obviously because ai doesn't exist without humans and obviously in science fiction the whole thing is mm -hmm. about when does ai take over humans and and stuff like that um yeah but we're, 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 we're still creating it as humans we're creating the ai it doesn't exist without us. It reminds mm. me of um, we our last, I don't know if it's the last episode, but a previous episode of the Polish ambassador when he was saying that, you know, he believes in aliens, but maybe it's not, um, you know, mm. humanoid bodies coming from the sky, but it's kind of already here within our technology, within the, the landscape and the things that are growing here, like apples yeah. or, you know, things that are alive yeah. and and it's within our technology that we already have, and, and this technology is helping us. Yeah. It, it, and it's within our musical artists as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and so it's like it's, it's infiltrating our society, like in the music industry, in this example with Actress, yeah. and it, it's, it's getting us to create it. Yeah. And, yeah. You, know, if, if this, he's, you know, if this guy's a conduit to this AI technology that he is very much Either knowingly creating. or subconsciously, yeah. Right. Subconsciously yeah. or or consciously yeah. this stuff is being created yeah whether there's intention behind it or not yeah but it seems like either either alien technology wants it aliens want that to happen or humans want it because we continue to create it one way or another and and artificial intelligence is becoming more prevalent well you know in it's our just society. like uh, the human imagination right i mean science fiction you know, it was the imagination of people thinking about things that could be, and then other people got inspired by that and were like, well, right. what if it could be? What if mm -hmm. we can make that? You know, and this is like a self fulfilling, <laughs> not prophecy, but like a self, so, you know, kind of like, you know, it's like time travel, right? It's yeah. like if you're a scientist and you're like, well, time travel is a cool thing. Ooh. Yeah, but what if I use my scientific knowledge to actually try and yeah. invent time travel? I'm sure people who are out there fucking try it. I actually read articles about this, about time travel, because I was curious about it. Is it real? Could it be real? 
Within the research of actress? No. Oh, like okay. separately. Because I research a bunch of random shit all the time. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, there are concepts out there of how it might work and how it might not work and how it would be feasible and not feasible kind of thing, you know. Well, it reminds me of that, that Jurassic Park quote. Like, they didn't bother to think whether they should. Yeah. But they just thought... What, yeah. What's the quote? You guys help me out. I don't. You know the quote though. Yeah. You, you all listeners know I the quote. I forget the quote specifically. But yeah, it was like you know, just because you can't. Uh, it's, this isn't what they said, but yeah, just no, because you can doesn't mean you should. That's the like that. that's the gist of it exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's true. Which is which is where we're at right now with everything with technology and the way life is going. You know, even cloning. You know, cloning's been a thing for a, a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, we've cloned they've pigs, cl- cloned animals. Yeah. Um, I'm sure some crazy person out there has already cloned a human. We might have met one along. We might what? have already met one. You don't know. <laughs> Jay? Might, might be in in politics. Who knows? I don't know. Last time I saw you, you had a beard. Now you don't. Are you? I uh, no. I just. Are you? A, I just time travel. I go through the. Oh, you're space, okay. Space you're, you're not artificial continue. intelligence. No, you're no, just no, a time traveler. Just time okay, travel. that's better, uh, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, um. How would you how would you um, pronounce that? Legos, uh, Lagos. I heard one guy say it, and I couldn't get it either. After he said it, yeah, I couldn't. I'm, it, it, I want to say Legos, but that's not. <laughs> I, I, I want to say Lagos. I think that's how I use only how because said it, something like that. Yeah, Lagos. It doesn't sound like Lagos. I think Legos, the little bri- big yeah, yeah. brick building block. Yeah, um, but cool. So yeah, a lot of mixing with acoustic. Um, or I'm sorry, we were on Azid, but you know we're on Lagos now. Yeah, yeah. And what year did that come out? Do you have that? Uh, Lagos, like 2018. Is, is I was saying it. Yeah, um, Lagos. Yeah, 2018. Yeah, so Lagos come out in 2018. And this one's a cool one. I listened to this record on the way here into Seattle. Okay. And yeah, quite experimental, quite ambient, quite weird. And this one was super cool because I think he, he used uh, the the London. Contemporary orchestra, yeah, exactly. Who I haven't really heard of before until now. Um, no, but they're pretty dope, they're pretty, you know, cool, pretty good. So, uh, I think this all came out of a performance, um, that was done at the Barbican. And the Barbican is a, um, like an arts center in London, it's a music venue, but but I think they sort of maybe commission things sometimes or whatever. Um, and uh, the London Contemporary Orchestra, I don't know if it was from Barbican or some other thing, but they um, were asked, you know, uh, of, of different electronic arc- artists that you might want to collaborate with. And they made a whole list of different electronic artists that they might want to collaborate with. And at the top of the list was Actress. Like, Oh, um, very cool. Uh, because I think a lot of his music is very sort of obviously atmospheric and classical in its own way. And so they wanted to collaborate with him on that. And so they did that. They worked together live in rehearsal rooms. They composed a bunch of music. They played several shows at the Barbican. I think several shows. I don't think it would have been in one. It would have been more than one with, yeah, with sure, that amount of work. I'm sure they know. had a little installment or yeah, whatever you call it. a series or whatever. Kind yeah. of thing. Um, and then so they decided they wanted to put out a recorded version of this. And the way they did that is um, the lead conductor... Uh, went through um, with this orchestra and they recorded each instrument separately f- from the original compositions. And they sent it uh, to Darren, uh, a.k.a. Actress, and then he sort of did his little bit of magic on it and then put together what became this album, Lagos, based off of um, that original sort of performances, performance compositions that mm-hmm. he creative with with the, the orchestra yeah right so. yeah it was super cool so i mean i think the kind of ethos behind this was mixing acoustic instrumentation with obviously actress is known for electronic yeah um instrumentation yeah. same same word but different yeah um so yeah um kind of extending where he went from acid you know has the chrome hand with the the human hand yeah and now he kind of like feel like he got that idea and like took it to the max where he's working with uh an orchestra of you know real humans playing live acoustic instruments yeah and of course he incorporates his electronic um expertise and aesthetic in there 
Yeah. So he's really blending the two between electronic and acoustic stuff. Um, and I think, yeah, it's exploring like the ambiguity of sound between electronic and, and acoustic spaces. Yeah. And then I think, so, I mean, first of all, this one, this is one where I, I, I was reading and he, he literally used plastic bags, keys, and milk frother. Mm. Milk frother is probably the most interesting thing that's not an instrument that I've ever <laughs> come across artists using as an instrument. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just would say that's cool. Yeah. You can use anything, you know, to create sounds. I just think that's a, a funny and kind of cool thing. Yeah. But this one was super interesting because on Lagos, this album, um, uh, wow, I can't think of the name. What was the place called? Um, the Barbican. Yeah. Was a, what's a, it's an auditorium. It's a venue. Yeah. Um, I think that's where that London orchestra operates out of, right? Uh, yeah. I, well, they definitely perform there. Yeah. I right. Yeah. At least, yeah. At least they perform there. Yeah. Um, but he was using the interior and the exterior of that building um, and even the surrounding area, picking out all the shapes and the architecture and the, the corners and the, the angles. And he was using that to conceptualize what instruments he wanted to use for different section of, sections of the music. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like, so I was saying at the beginning of the episode, like a, like a drum sound and how you can use an envelope to kind of change that sound as it moves through time and space, Yeah, you know, and, and he's literally like, okay, well, the music's coming from here and it's going to bounce off these walls of this architecture of this physical being that we're in, Yeah, this physical infrastructure that, that people built. And he's kind of, you know, incorporating that in his thought process as he's writing this music. And that's, that's just insane and super cool. And goes to show how much he's, how much he's thinking about this and conceptualizing what he's trying to create, not just in his little studio in London or whatever, like yeah. pressing buttons and creating electronic music. He's literally using the space around him and the architecture that humans built as a way to influence what instruments he's using and how they're used in his um, music. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> the whole thing because like the Barbican uh, building, it's all like concrete and it's it's designed but a lot of people don't like it and um really yeah and it was uh it has a name for it they call it brutalist brutalist hmm. architecture um which is a thing obviously in, in the architecture world uh barbican's not the only building that's like that there are plenty of others around the world i mean when i hear barbican i hear barbarian well there you go connection I mean, it's kind of fitting maybe, maybe. i don't know where maybe. the name came from but yeah um, the architecture is barbaric. Yeah, it's very, it's very oppressive feeling and cold and um, concrete and grey and hard lines and very harsh. That's why they call it brutalist. And I think all those words you just described his <laughs> discography of music. <laughs> probably. Yeah, that was probably the best go, yeah. descriptor of this is actress. Quite, quite fitting. For, In the best um, way. Him to do that there, yeah. So, well, how about um, let's play a little bit of of that album because i think it's pretty good mm -hmm. um yeah there's a few things on there yeah i especially liked a lot of the drums and percussion on this a lot of the stuff was like you know, ambient and just sounds yeah. of weird strings or milk frothers being recorded and odd sounds yeah. soundscapes but it is brought together when he puts a nice sharp beat uh, some of the beats yeah kind of perky lively fun yeah and it, it's cool it's really cool and i don't know if this one has much of any i think that you just described on there but that's fine uh we'll play it anyway <laughs>
Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty groovy. That's not really indicative of the rest of the album. It's mostly mm-hmm. beatless. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but that was pretty cool. I like. Um, I guess when I was thinking of that, especially that last part, those strings. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah, but it, it's almost like he's indulging in the worst the worst part of what those strings sound like. Mm. Like those aren't like the most perfect string mm, arrangements. All the prettiest it's sounding like, things. I think what he's trying to draw out of that is the kind of rough part of those strings on those. Yeah. I mean, what do you call them? What are those strings made out of? Like horse hair or something? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think, I don't know. Yeah. It just sounded like it sounds kind of rough. Yeah. Around yeah, the yeah. edges. It's not like a pristine, like Disney strings, like, <laughs> da, 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 and like beautiful. Like you can hear, or uh, I guess on the bow, it's like horse hair or okay, yeah. badger hair or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. On the strings. On the bow. But what I heard yeah. more than like the pretty string sound was the, the percussive scraping on the strings. Yeah, yeah. Which mm-hmm. is cool. And I, I like that. And I enjoyed listening to that. Yeah. And I, I don't know, it makes me think of what the, the orchestra would think. Like, yo, I'm a professional string player and you're making my string sound like not that great. <laughs> um, no, I don't know if that, maybe, maybe it's just me. I think they loved it because I saw an a interview with some of those <laughs> uh, musicians around that and the lead violinist, uh, she mentioned another track um, that she was really proud of, which sounded even way more obscure and probably less orchestral and more glitchy and messed up Mm -hmm. um and she was talking about that as being like a track that she really enjoyed playing so well that's i mean good that's great yeah Yeah, i mean they're they're the london contemporary orchestra i don't know much about them but um i'm guessing they like to do some shit that's not contempt this not i was gonna say not contemporary that's not um conventional yeah no exactly yeah so i'm Yeah. yeah i'm sure i would hope once people are at that level of musicianship they don't get hurt about like i know i'm good yeah. i don't need other people to tell me what sounds good or what doesn't yeah and you know this is a collaboration it's not like i was the sound engineer for what my string sounded like and i didn't arrange the part or write it as much yeah. you know solo by myself yeah i didn't have full control yeah. and for that reason you know it's okay to have a little bit of freedom to make it sound how you want it to sound yeah. for your project yeah it's not my project so i'm yeah. just saying i mean i'm i enjoy the different kinds of sounds it's not it doesn't sound like conventional pretty yeah. strings yeah. making it sound just dramatic and pretty and emotional it's more percussive yeah and i don't know i i, I really like that is what i'm saying yeah. i don't mean to sound like a downer guy <laughs> like um bringing down the energy here <laughs> like i like it a lot and that's what i was listening to when i heard that track yeah well um for sure i mean yeah so great that was lagos yeah and then i don't know i made a mistake or something but uh that's all my notes but he has an album after that that's good yeah um (laughs) we can end anyway i have to apologize to the youtube viewers because uh jesse's camera cut out and i I don't know if my camera cut out did it cut out this is this is is there a flashing symbol that says full yeah there's a flashing garbage can or something (laughs) so that's not what you want to see. Hey, but, but you know, we're, we're mostly here for you audio folks. Exactly. This yeah. is this is prime time audio for those feels. those video people on YouTube are the second tier yeah. of who we're catering to. That's you, true. you guys are our favorite, so just know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're all here together, and we we lost all those video people. So now lost, it's just us. Lost the video it's, people. It's a little more the, intimate now. The AB Club has yeah. gone home. Forget them. Forget them. You know, we're upgrading that. You know little tidbit little thing of information well, here you i know? mean by the time this comes out signal will have a new home a new home if nobody yeah. knew that yet i don't know if i'm not trying to maybe we'll edit this out if it's supposed to be a surprise but there we'll, you go we'll already be in the new home by the time this thing comes out anyway, no so okay um, that's fine if it's out it's out yeah so we're in the new home yet but it's soon and uh we're gonna make this whole thing cinematic yes baby um but yeah so karma and desire was uh actresses most recent album came out in 2020 i'm not sure when in 2020 but it did come out in 2020 sometime in the last 13 months yeah and uh i feel like we should uh just uh leave 
um, uh, close out on this. I have a track called Walking Flames from that album. And it features Sampha, who's a really good... Uh, who's a guy, not a girl. <laughs> who's a guy, not a girl. Um, great soul. I guess you call him a soul singer out of the UK. He's done a lot of things. Um, his solo album's great as well. I think he's only released one album. But he's featured on a lot of different people's stuff, including, including Subtract, um, who we mentioned a while ago in a Jesse Ware episode because Jesse Ware featured Gosh, yeah, on some yeah. of Subtract stuff as well, and so did Sanfa. He gets around a little bit. He Sanfa also actually did some collaborations with Beyonce's sister. I forgot her name, but she's actually really good. It's not, uh, Beyonce's sister that she's not really mainstream, but she does some good. I don't know. She kind of Beyonce R&B had stuff. a sister. Yeah. Maybe um, is she an actress? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Well, I just said that because yeah. that's who we're talking about. Who here is, <laughs> oh, is actress. Yeah, actress? So see how I looped that in there. I uh, see how you tied that in there. Yeah, but um, you know, so this has been actress, guys. I never heard of this guy. Awesome guy from the UK, making super cool, avant-garde, um, weird, electronic, ambient, cool music. Somebody yeah. just got a text message. So that's yeah, dope. That was me. That's, Get, that sound was not supposed to come through. But yeah, we, we got it. A, who's our tech guy? Where's our tech guy? Yeah, hey, yeah. tech guy. Uh, he's out for lunch. He's bringing us some sandwiches. Yeah, okay. But I mean, super cool. Actress, check them out. I'd start with the first album, Hazyville. Go from there. Let us know what you think. Give us that email to hit us up with any uh, updates or um, corrections. Uh, email us at roots to grooves at signalradio.com that's s-i-g-n-l radio.com yeah hit us up with some uh um any stories you got about actress or any of these artists that you know that we've talked about we'd love to hear from you yeah absolutely until next time this is roots to grooves i'm jesse roots, i'm jay and uh we'll catch you next time we're out all right
Roots to Grooves is a production of Signal Radio. For more music and independent culture, visit signalradio.com. That's S-I-G-N-L radio.com. <laughs>